So, Glenn, you had the big special last night on the economy, and uh, I find it to be a really fascinating situation right now. Let me let me give you just a couple of stats that I've seen. Yeah. Uh, the pending home sales in the United States down 22.5% year over year. That's as low as the 2008 financial crisis and almost as low as the COVID collapse, which you might, you might remember we basically shut down the entire world in March and April of 2020. Yeah, so nobody was bad. really buying houses at that time because you couldn't leave your house. Couldn't leave your house, right? Okay. No. So it's just, it's, it's a little better than that. A little better than that. Little better than closing every business, every bank, every real estate office, <clears throat> all transactions stop. <laughs> it's a little better than that. Yeah. Okay. Liquidity conditions in the U.S. Treasury market. This is uh, measured by Bloomberg. It is as bad as March 2020, basically. As bad as March 2020. Then you have this situation, which I find to be fascinating. If you have, if you want to pay $2,500 a month on your mortgage, okay, $2,500 a month with 20% down, typical sort of situation, you might be going to buy a new home. Um, as of uh, a year ago, you could afford a house that was seven hundred and fifty nine thousand mm-hmm. dollars with that outcome. Twenty percent down, uh, twenty five hundred dollars a month. Seven hundred fifty nine thousand dollars a year ago. Now it's four hundred and seventy six thousand dollars because of all of the interest rate changes, mm-hmm. all the inflation, and all of that. Now at the same time, almost every currency in the globe is going through the basement floor, and the U.S. dollar is the only one that is showing any strength. Mm -hmm. So how do you look at all of that and come up with some grand unifying theory as to what is going on? Um, The central banks are destroying everything. They're destroying everything. They all got bailed out. You know, the, and I don't, I, I don't, I'm not qualified nor uh, do I feel um, appropriately equipped to talk about, you know, liquidity in the bond market. That's something that can be saved for CNBC. It just means that those people who are in the, you know, stock game, the liquidity is very low, meaning there's not a lot of excess money slashing or sloshing around. So if things go down, there's no money there to be able to bail things out. Okay, that is the central bank. What they've been doing, they've been printing money. So there's still plenty of money. Okay, Mm -hmm. so that means that you're going to have to start printing money. That's what happened yesterday in England. The um, the union pensions all went under. Okay, it's just folded up. There's no way we can we can pay for any of these pensions folded up. And so the Bank of England who just swore we're not printing any more money, inflation is already out of control. They said, except for now, we're printing money. And they just started printing money like there's no tomorrow. So the bond market, the the stock exchange over there, went up. Why? Because the the people who are playing the game and getting the money from the central bank They're like, okay, great. They're printing money again, plenty of money. I'm going to make some more money here. I'm going to put it back into the stock market, and I'll make money, and then I'll pull it out. This is a game that does not end. You cannot get out of this. This is something I've been warning about since 2008, and they're not going to tell you. I'm going to to attach a name uh, to something because I really respect this guy, and I would never have expected him to say something like this, um, but... He really believes, and and so I'm attaching a name because I think he's a good guy. And it just shows if the good guys are thinking like this, what are the nefarious ones thinking? I was on Neil Cavuto 2007, and uh, I laid the case out that we were going to have a collapse. And, um, And he pushed back and pushed back. And I have no problem if people disagree. In fact, I said, Neil, if you disagree, please. I want to know where I'm wrong. I want to be wrong on this. It just doesn't look like I'm wrong. 
Um, we finished, and Neil, who, again, I, I believe is truly a good guy, he looked at me and, well, sorry, he didn't look at me. I got up from the table. I said, thank you, Neil. That was good. And he said, you're the most irresponsible broadcaster I have ever met. And I said, and that was crushing to me because I like Neil. And I said, what? And I said, uh, what, 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 do you, what do you, what, what, what? What, why, what did I get wrong? Why didn't you say what I got wrong? Because uh, I want to know. And he said, no, you're not wrong. We just don't say those things. That causes panic. And panic causes things to get worse. And I, my, my point of view was, no, by not telling the American people what is possibly coming, causes even more panic when it comes. Uh, the reason why I say this, and I've attached his name to it for the first time, is because I respect Neil. I think he's a good guy. And there are honest people who have honest differences on, on what to say and how to react. But you have an administration now and a media that is doing nothing. They're doing nothing but lying to you. And everybody knows this is a train wreck. So yesterday, the British pound almost collapsed. Why is the dollar going up? Because the euro is going down. Because the British pound is going down. Everybody's on the verge of collapse. America is the strongest place to put your money. Now, let me ask you this. You have to, uh, you have to uh, put your product in a store, and you're responsible for everything that is sold, uh, damaged, or lost. Where are you going to put your product? In a CVS? In a part of town that is just is getting ransacked every day. You know, you're going to put it in downtown San Francisco where people go in and take the product and just walk away with it. Are you going to put your money there? Or are you going to put your money in a place where it may not happen, but it is happening, but just not at that rate yet? You, of course, put your product there and stop putting your product in San Francisco. Correct? Doesn't that seem logical? That's what's happening to the dollar. It's not that we're strong. It's just that we're the last one to go. And as I've had this argument with people, I've always explained it as the floatiest poop, a piece of poop in the toilet bowl, uh, because maybe it will get people's attention. That all has to be flushed. Okay, it is not going to last. It's not going to last. But people with lots of money, institutions, you know, um, funds that are investing for other people, where are you going to put your money? Where are you going to put it? Tell me the country that is stable. Tell me the country that isn't on the verge of collapse. Tell me the country that didn't play the game of printing money so they could spend more money. Tell me the country. You can't. There is no country. Did you see the video of China blowing up their ghost cities? You seen this? They're taking the parts of the ghost cities where they hadn't finished them. And I mean 25 skyscrapers, okay? They looked finished. They're not finished on the inside. 25 of them. Taking them all down at once. Boom. Blowing them up. They're all coming down at once. It looks like the finale of Fight Club is what it looks yeah. like to me. It's crazy, it is isn't crazy. it? crazy. They're destroying because they can't let them sit there empty. So they blow them up and destroy because that never worked. What they were doing was printing money that they didn't have to keep everybody employed and build these ghost cities. Now what? Now what? So you have to start thinking 
in a way that you've never had to think before. And this is a global thing. If people in England, and I doubt they are because they don't have talk radio, they have the BBC. And if you think I was on NPR and would be allowed to have this conversation, you're fooling yourself. So try to get someone on the BBC to say this. They won't. You, if you're in England and you think that it's going to go well, it's not. And it has nothing to do with the new tax proposal. The new tax proposal lowered corporate rates by 1%. 1%. That's not going to cause an economic collapse. Okay? That will actually spur things on. Not very much, because it's only a 1% cut. It's no big deal. The other cuts were already in the plans. They were already coming, were they not? Yeah, there was a, a tax cut from for the average person. It was like 20% to 19%. The highest income bracket, well, I think, went from 45 to 40. Okay. They, they, they say the difference here is $5 billion. This is the, the panicky thing, uh, you know, the, these estimates. $5 billion of tax revenue per year, which, of course, is nothing compared to what they spent on COVID and is basically what they've already spent on Ukraine this year. Not us, but them. You, uh, the UK so don't spent. send what you were going to send to Ukraine. And or then the you, orcs just stop spending all the money on COVID, which yeah. you should be doing anyway. Right. And you've saved all that money. You've done it in a year. Save all that money. It's a miracle. What's happening is the banks, the central banks have played the game. We are now coming to the end of that game. So now what do you do? I'm not going to talk at all about stocks or bonds or any of that crap that you'll find on CNBC. They know more than, than I do, I'm sure. But let me tell you, for anybody who's not a big investor, what do you do? All right, so what do you do? What do you do? Uh, I don't know what people are going to need. I just know people are going to be in need. So if we want to be a blessing to others, the best thing, and yourself, the best thing you can own is food. Water, uh, some natural gas or, you know, um, uh, propane, um, anything that are essentials, toothpaste, uh, uh, toilet paper. We are going to see real shortages, and that is going to be coupled with a, a stagflation kind of market where people are losing their jobs, we're not growing at all. And, uh, and people don't know what to do. You have to think like a, a German Jew of the 1930s. You have to start thinking that way. You have to start thinking just like a German in hyperinflation. If you read any of the diaries of these people that lived back then, they said no one knew what hyperinflation even meant a week ago. Now it's all that people can talk about. You have a chance, as we outlined on the special last night, there is a chance we turn into Venezuela. And that happens overnight. That is not something, how does somebody go broke? How does somebody go bankrupt? Over a long period of time and then all at once. You've made decisions all the way along and you push it off, push it off, push it off, push it off. Then the straw that breaks the camel's back, whatever it is, it breaks and you are out. That's the way it will happen here. Hopefully it doesn't happen. And I can't tell you for sure what to invest in, what to put your money in. I know food will never go out of style. But will food be called hoarding? Well, it was in Germany. Art. Art, but how long does it take before? Because there are going to be people who survive. See, they are just waiting you out. The people at the top are waiting you out. When you crumble and you can't afford it, then they'll scoop in and buy it at a wholesale price. So what do you have? What do you have? Gold, silver. We're going to talk about cryptocurrencies in just a second with a guy who is going to be 
the head of the uh, or one of the heads of the House Financial Committee uh, when we come back here in about 10 minutes. Um, he's going to talk to us about cryptocurrency and what all of that means and what the government is doing right now. What are they doing? They're collapsing cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, I bet you if it was completely unleashed right now, if there weren't any government saying, well, we're going to control, cryptocurrency would probably be at $100,000 for Bitcoin right now. Um, you've got to have food, water, land, a home, but not the stuff that you're so far in debt. If you have high interest credit cards, anything that is high interest or variable, get rid of it right now. It's better to have uh, you know, 5 or 7% loan on your house than a variable loan because the, the interest rate could become crippling. Now, what most likely is going to happen is they're going to just start raising the rate and raising the rate and raising the rate until everything falls apart. And then they're going to slash the rate. And that at the time they slash the rate, before inflation is fixed, that is your moment of uh, we've given up. Acceleration of inflation is our destiny. You'll start seeing them go to cryptocurrency and everything else. When America does that, that's when the world really freaks out and the game completely changes. <laughs> 